Alright guys, even though I've completed all chapters 1 through 5, this is the final Bindi and the Ink Machine video. Nothing too much, but we're just going to delve into the archives. That's it. And not only are we delving into the archives, I do have a small announcement for y'all after we finish going through all this. So, hopefully y'all can just stick around to the end for what I have to say. Welcome to the archives. Bendy and the Ink Machine began when the developer cartoonist known as The Meatly experimented with bringing a sketched 2D style into a 3D world. After turning the idea into a horror game, Chapter 1 of the game was created in a little under a week with programmer friend Mike Mood and released on February 10th in 2017. Much to their surprise, it struck a chord with global indie gamers almost overnight. The Meatly and Mike Mood decided to drop all other projects to work on Bindi and tell a most unique ink story. The entire game was completed a chapter at a time in a year and a half by a small but dedicated group of indie developers. Although the concept and story remained as originally intended, the game changed over development as characters and models were refined from their early thrown together versions. This archive is a peek behind the scenes of that process. Just gonna start with I'm gonna start with the ones on the outside and then work uh, then we're gonna go on to the ones on the inside so first uh, I want to save this for last that's me so we got the original concept for Bindi this is the first version of Bindi ever modeled in the earliest concepts Bindi was much smaller and cuter with a face that split open to reveal a terrifying mouth and the next thing we know, we got this, the Alpha Bindi right here. This is the original game used design of Ink Bindi from the earliest version of Chapter 1. It is jokingly referred to as Bird Poop with a Smile. Sorry, I'm a little tired. Uh, referred to as Bird Poop with a Smile among the development team. Next we have Beta Bindi. This was Ink Bindi's form and this was Ink Bindi's form until the release of Chapter 4. At that time the game received a major visual upgrade and the title character got a new model as well. And we got the new version of Bindi. Ink Bindi as we know him today, although similar to Beta Bindi, this upgraded version was remodeled, enhanced with a higher polygon count, and given new ink effects. Hmm. We got Beast Bindi right here. Ink Bindi's horrific final form and Chapter 5 pulled away the cartoon facade and revealed the demon within. Then we got the Beta Searcher right here. Early in development with just a few weeks to create Chapter 2. The beta searchers were designed in record time before being fully retooled later on. They were the first fighting enemies encountered in the game. Then we got the final searcher. The final searchers were far more robust in appearance. They were smoother with better ink effects and a more human appearance. Then we got Beta Sammy right here. With his first appearance in Chapter 2, fan favorite Sammy Lawrence became a terrifyingly entertaining character. When his slim build was deemed not threatening enough, he was redesigned and given a better skeletal rig for more advanced animation. Got... F final Sammy? Sammy Lawrence's final form came complete with a bulked up stature and more powerful limbs. The mad songwriter may finally get noticed now, at least by fans. Uh, look at the difference. You, first off, you can definitely tell the, you can definitely see the 
muscle tone in the final Sammy compared to Beta. And also, look at the look at that. You can barely see Beta Sammy's shoes, while Final Sammy, you can definitely see them. And then at least like the overall straps actually fit on his shoulders now compared to Beta. That's how much of an upgrade it got. Uh, we got the last one. Alice Angel. Then we got Allison from Chapter 5, yeah. Tom. Yeah, Tom the Wolf from Chapter 5. I don't know why I'm yawning constantly right now. Alright. Uh, this was Beta Boris. Like, the first ever version of Boris from Chapter 1. Papa was the original name of the character that eventually became Boris the Wolf. This early version was released with Chapter 1. He was quickly refined into the Boris we know today with the release of Chapter 2, which is this Boris right here. Boris the Wolf, a friend to the end, was designed using various references from cartoons of the 1920s, a blend of West Coast and East Coast animation styles, the silent and supportive wolf won over the hearts of many, although at times he was a headache for the development team due to his AI taking on a mind of its own during production. They got Brute Boris. Alice Angel's monstrosity, Brute Boris, was one of the biggest surprises of Chapter 4. His design was roughly based on the Frankenstein monster, but with a more unfinished appearance. Alice took parts from within him and substituted things that his body is rapidly rejecting. Damn. We got the original Ink Machine. Before a major visual upgrade, this version of the Ink Machine was the one used in the game. Much of this machine's iconic fan-loved design was translated into the final version. What else is there right here? That is the head of Bertram Piedmont from Chapter 4. Uh, when he had to fight him in the little... Oh, uh, the little carousel or whatever. We got the Butcher Gang. The Piper, Striker, and Fisher make up the, dead, the dreaded Butcher Gang. Interestingly, the ink corrupted versions of the characters were designed first and then were reverse engineered back into their more family friendly cartoon forms. Ah, oh, fan art. We got some fan art. Uh, not fan art. Uh, concept art, too. So we got Ink Bendy there. There's Beast Bendy concept. Oh, that, I actually like that. That looks good. Oh, we got the hand from Chapter 5. Okay. Same in Lawrence. Piper. Striker. There's Fisher. The Lost One. What is that concept art for the Lost One? That I don't really like that. That is horrific. Okay. Moving on. Uh, Alice Angel and Allison. They've got uh, the giant ink machine from Chapter 5. Then you got it looks like the lost uh, little hut from the uh, the lost one settlement from chapter five. Yeah, and then we got Bendy's throne. There's brute Boris. Yeah. Uh, anything else I'm missing before I read off my sign? Uh, oh. There's a giant thing on the screen saying Bindi and the Ink Machine. What is the brightness on this, though? Brightness is 100. What the fuck? Alright, I don't think there's anything else. Uh, then we got my sign right here. Henry Stein. Once an equal business partner of Joey Drew, Henry Stein was a talented animator and character designer until leaving the company around 1930. His place in Joy Drew Studios history is somewhat undocumented, 
but he is often rumored to be the true creator behind many of the studio's most memorable characters. And I'm just gonna stand right here. See, if I was on Steam right now, this standing right here on this pedestal would have given me a, an achievement. But no, I have to be on Switch. <laughs> and then... And then I'm just going to pause that real quick to stop the music. As I do, as I did say, I have a small short announcement. It's just, at the day of recording this is September 17th, 2022. This is most likely going to be my last video for this month. As I have ideas for videos that I want to publish, uh, get out for October. And first off, I would like to say that it's going to be one video per day. That's right. You get one video a day all throughout October. They're all going to be somewhat the based the same. I'm not going to spoil what those videos are going to be. They're all going to be somewhat the same way, but with their own differences. And little bit of a teaser gonna end up doing full blown face cam for those videos not the usual hand cam that y'all are used to seeing with my Friday Night Funkin videos no I mean full blown face cam will I be a little bit nervous in front of the camera possibly but am I still gonna suck it up yes Because this will be the first time all of y'all will be able to actually fully see my face. Aside from the little glimpses y'all get whenever I have to bend my head down during the Friday Night Funkin' videos. Yeah. Trust me. I know. I, I'm aware that my face gets captured in that, but it's only for a short period of time. But for October, each video... Full face cam, the entire video, each single one. You can expect at least one video a day. So there's going to be a minimum of 31 videos going out throughout October. So I hope you all will look forward to that. If you really want to look forward to it, then what I would recommend you do is hit the subscribe button ring the bell whenever you get notified when a video goes out each day for October. Alright? And with that said and done, I'll see y'all on October 1st.